more successful you. I'm proud of you, because back in the day, this is how you did it. <laughs> this is gonna make me be a better business owner right here. You are super flashy out there this year, Fallon. Yeah, it's part of my flair. I would say I'm a little eccentric, maybe a skosh flamboyant. Well, I'm hoping I get to come back for the next few rounds so I can wear my tie-dye. We're gonna get this sent out. Fear the little red, fear the little black, fear the little appy. So check it out. Dirt is cowgirl glitter, and there's a few more. Here, so you pull it over your head. The rest of these are faux buttons, so they're not gonna get caught on your saddle horn, and they're not gonna come open. I'm excited to tell this story. It's a happy story. Lots of bumps in the road, lots of twists and turns, but I think it's super important. I kind of dodged business things because I just didn't think that people could relate. As I've gotten older and more mature, I realize everybody's trying to pay their bills. <laughs> I realize that all of those little vulnerabilities are what is the fabric of our relationship. I've learned that the, this like really super raw space is something that's super unique on the internet and something that I really enjoy watching. I love watching the backstories of how things were created and why they were created and what keeps someone motivated. I think I get asked online 10 times a day, what's your motivation and how do you find the motivation? One thing that I've learned for sure is that Anything worth doing is gonna be really, really hard. You're a beginner at absolutely everything. And you don't need more motivation. You just need to be going after something you love. If you're not motivated or don't feel disciplined, it's just because it's not the right thing for you. And you shouldn't feel guilty about that from family or friends or absolutely anyone. So here's the story of a girl that got obsessed with Fantasy Factory on MTV where I saw this really cool work environment where Rob Deerdick and all of his friends would skateboard outside of their offices. Um, it's where my do work tattoo comes from. And everybody were, bills were paid and they were enjoying all of this fulfillment around with their pets around and their kids and whatever else was happening and still being a professional athlete. And I guess I just got like really, really carried away with that vision of the business. He has come up with the ranch roping on a cricket. This is a cricket roping. We have deadlines to meet, guys. Okay, man. <laughs> go, 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 go. Hey, that was not bad. That was not bad. Now, mind you, I didn't have an extra dollar anywhere. So the story of how Baby Flo and I started competing on the road, if you've seen Unfiltered, we started from the bottom, now we're here. It's basically this whole story of, you know, I just had to borrow a truck and a trailer and the whole thing, but I was raised by entrepreneurs. So my mom and dad, they were in business for themselves. My dad is 82 years old. He's still in business for himself. My name is Shelton Taylor, and I'm the inventor of My Air Hitch. That was perfect. One take and be done. 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 <laughs> There's more to the video. <laughs> it's really cool to watch him go out and create with his hands and do manual labor and ship parts and answer the phone and still take sales calls because it's, um, really cool to watch the freedoms of what he's able to do and how they were able to go on the road with me when I was seven because of this business. So I guess I've really always had this in the forefront of my mind because that's how I was raised. So the perfect ending or the perfect middle to this story would be that I would get to also raise a family in the same way that I was raised. She's a helper. <laughs> Help them pack orders. You doing orders? <laughs> okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tote, okay? 
Okay. Oh, they didn't, okay, they get a free gift, I guess. I had that as an example to go off of, but I didn't really know where to start. And the internet was just coming around, um, just starting to be used as a place where people had websites. I moved to New York to be a model, and while I was there, I side hustled with all of these things I would buy at these designer openings and um, things that got popular because reality TV started to come out and I would go up and gather all of these things and call stores all around the place. And then I would then resell the items on eBay and just kind of got my feet wet with doing that. When I kind of diverted, I came home from there and I wanted to go rodeo, that ranch dressing would kind of get it started. I didn't know that that's what it was at the time, but I wanted to find a way to be able to pay for my fuel and my injury fees. If I could just cover those expenses one at a time, then the pressure of me having to win at that rodeo could be alleviated. And then I could actually concentrate on just being a competitor. So I bought up some shirts that I could afford, um, just a few at a time, two or three at a time. Typically they were men's shirts, um, so they buttoned on the wrong side. But I, I bought those and I would sell them with my back number attached and I would run an online Facebook auction and I would pose next to my borrowed truck and it'd be like, I just ran at this rodeo. If you wanna buy my shirt with my back number, go for it. I am gonna be doing a special called The Shirt Off My Back. All the shirts that I've been running in at the jackpots and on my rodeo trail journey this year in 2012, I'm gonna be putting on eBay or you can bid directly on Facebook. I'll give you more information below in the box, right below here. You can just look right there and I'm gonna have a link directly to everything. You can be bidding on all these very items that I'm wearing and all the ones that you see in the videos and where I'm running at the pro rodeos. Most of them will have my back number still attached, so we're gonna have some good luck on all your rodeo shirts coming up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you soon. I think the outside world saw a four-time NFR qualifier making a comeback on a new horse and maybe had followed that part of my career in the 90s. But I think what people fail to remember is these expenses that go into what we do are so insanely high that your favorite cowboy or cowgirl probably does not have money running out of their ears. They're, they're lucky if they break even at the end of the year. We have to buy our own tickets at the NFR. We have to pay for our own fuel. And sponsorships like to give you product. And so it's very hard to actually cover your day-to-day -day expenses going down the road because you have product. And it's in very poor taste to sell that product to then turn it into cash. So you have to keep it. You got to wear it. You got to rock it and hope for the best. So I began the shirt off my back specials every single run. Here we are. Oh, yeah. Here we are. Wrangler size medium lilac snap front shirt, won lots of money in it. Fits great, accented with rhinestone studs. Text to bid, no comments, no messages. And then um, a lady said, she wants jeans off your butt. Pink Wranglers. Coming <gasps> soon. Jeans off my butt turns into a whole warehouse. You'll see. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> You'll see. Just wish is my demand. That was, you know, these, I mean, I did it. I did that. These were men's shirts too. These were men's shirts mm -hmm. that I bought at quinceanera stores. I mean, they always had a floor de lis on. They always had a floor de lis and they yeah. always had a little bit of embellishment and this, the yeah. buttons were always on the wrong side. Skip to the shirt off my back thing working pretty well. I was simultaneously doing my YouTube channel and I was really just trying to add value to the internet and explore this new platform of making some content for helping barrel racers on the internet and just see what would happen. And I'm so excited to give you guys this news. Um, I put on Facebook that I wanted to do a clinic where just my expenses were covered. And I figured out that there are so many of you guys wanting help with your own individual horses all over the country that it's going to be impossible for me to get everywhere that I want to be. So now that I've gotten Chuck pretty squared away, my colts are doing really well, my rodeo horses are seasoned and I've been able to haul them a lot. I think that I'm ready to take on a few outside horses for training. Well, I got a girl that sent her horse to me for training. She sent me a horse named Harlow and she came in to tour the ranch and she was like, I like to toy around with design. I don't really know what I'm doing, but you know, we could work together if you wanted to like kind of have a little meeting and we could talk about some things. I really think you don't understand that people would really like to buy some things from you. You know, I know you're already doing the shirt off my back, but I think people would really like 
more stuff if you could because I was competing in black and yellow. I was starting to really brand myself with that. I was using the hashtag fear the brand and I was using the Florida Lee on everything which is my brand that I have on my horses. And so that girl is Jessie Harmon Southerd. She came into my little single wide trailer house that is now parked at this ranch and will never leave. And that's kind of where ranch dressing started to expand because I started to match everything as I could afford just a little bit more or I found spray paint or glue or whatever else. I would make stuff and try to make everything match up. So like purple shirt, purple pants, whatever. Spray painted jeans. Here we go. 2013. Are these the, um, yeah, Great Dad Cutter. So this, yeah. these are the pants that transfer on pretty close. These are the pants. Those exact pants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. But see, but wait, go back. Okay. So now we're really getting into hand dyeing your jeans. Yes, this yeah. is hand dyed. Those these, are zipped. These, zipped these are Jesse Jean. I'll never forget, she had a little notebook and she was like, just making this like list of things that we could do. And all I could remember was looking at her and being like, this is all great and fine and good, but like, I'm literally gonna eat ramen tonight. <laughs> like, how am I going to, how am I going to pay for t-shirts and, you know, to get some inventory in here? And why would anybody buy something with my name on it? And she was like, I just think maybe you're too in it and you're not seeing like, we all, like, we all feel like we're on this journey with you and there's so many people that wanna support you and be with you because we all have a little red horse that everybody told us that we can't go win everything on that we raised and didn't give much for. We all have um, this kind of dream to go do something bigger and she was like, you're kind of not just riding for you, you're riding for all of us. The reason I was riding Baby Flow is because I just made a YouTube kind of documentary, an unfiltered if you will, on my horse Chuck Taylor, how I'd kind of gotten some steam and gotten my name up in the standings and then he had an injury that was career ending. And so I had documented that and a lot of followers came from documenting that journey. A lot of haters came, but a lot of followers came and watched me live in the barn with him and spend over $80,000 that I didn't have to try to patch him together. And he stayed alive for a long time and it's really cool because I've got a lot of babies out of him um, that are doing really well. But out of that came me trying to like actually make a run at the NFR on baby flow. And I, I frankly, it didn't have the finances to make this happen at all. This is when I launched Cafe Press, which shall we? Oh my gosh. Is it there? No, it's not. It can't there can't be. be, right? Ah! <laughs> this is awesome. Could you buy a shirt? You can buy a shirt. Wait, wait, where are those funds going? <laughs> Look, yeah. There's a toddler shirt. I did. Flying flow. This. Look at this. No order. Yeah. No, but like, where are the funds? Be yourself. Going? Look. Hey, be yourself. Look at it. This is the one that sold out. This was ranch dressing before ranch dressing. Ranch dressing, dressing right here. Oh. <gasps> Look. That's the go with the flow pick I uploaded. Yes. So great. I know, I know, been man. Around. Been, around. been around, been doing it. So after meeting Jesse um, and putting some things down on paper, I was like, okay, we gotta start somewhere. So we got a few blank t-shirts and um, a little vinyl cutter machine and we rented um, a small garage um, at a lady's place that allowed us to use like all of these different things and a computer and um, we stayed up for hours and hours trying to figure out like how it is that we're gonna make these different vinyl presses and all of these different things. And then yes. I started doing writing lessons to pay, tape, to pay for stock. And then this is where we start. Here we go. This was my first size run. And then we bought these blanks and we heat pressed these things on. Mm -hmm. And you would comment with your PayPal email to buy. Mm -hmm. No one did. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It's but fine. No it says, that's when you were like, let's call it ranch dressing. Yeah. And then like that lady was like, love the name. Yeah. I remember you texting me. Yeah. I remember this so vividly. You were like, yes. okay, go with yes. me here. Ranch dressing. I was yes. like, spell that out for me. Yeah. So then we're like, okay, pants, ranch dressing. And I, I specifically cut these out. It, it, you have no idea how long it took me to figure out how to make those. Dude. Yeah. On the cutter thing. Dude. Because the cutter thing was like, that was a nightmare. That was a nightmare. And it was like on, 
It was like MS DOS. So those pants were supposed to be turquoise. They weren't. Not yeah, you you tried. Yet. No. And they ended up being baby blue. That was fine. <laughs> and so we just went with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you dyed these, which Rubber were awesome. Hands. Yeah, which were awesome. And then we My went. Hands were orange. For yeah, we went Denver Broncos, and here's where I started dying. Jesse started dying a lot of the stuff because I was under contract with Cruel Girl, and yeah. this is where we started, where they started to not like it. Nope, they were <laughs> really not okay with it. This is where it really started to not go well. And I just did it in a wash rack in a bucket. Yeah, in the barn. You know, we we're kind of one man band, all of us. So, in my single wide trailer. I had a vinyl room set up. That was where we cut all of our vinyl after we moved out of the garage that we were renting. And it was like smoky. I'm sure it was not a great health beneficial kind of scenario because the whole place, you know, there's heat press and vinyl and just like glue. And I lived in there because we couldn't afford another space. Back off Buckle Bunny. Classic. I like how many times you posted the picture of just like- Yeah, <laughs> just like, yeah, oh yeah. And then this is where I started like shouting out belt, Jayco, hat, glamour, grit, pants, ranch dressing. Didn't have an at sign. Not yet. We didn't have like, Not we didn't yet. have any of that. But like, you still work unless you do, girl. no, back off, Buckle, Buckle Bunny. Bunny. There's Keep Walking Cowboy. I'm like, like I'm telling you. Yeah. You don't scare Listen, me around a mirror. These pants, like I couldn't stop wearing these. Yeah, no, I remember that. But yeah. I, I, I love them like, so I like, much. Yeah, she's I so love them so much. It, it yeah. was oh, so and great. Then the, of course, the hat to match. And the lightweight saddle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a vibe. Mm -hmm. Just a whole, down a leg. whole vibe. Okay. So there's, we just kept going. Okay. Now here's, oh, here we go. Okay. So here's people that are like, I want to buy these. Oh my gosh. I've tried to order them. Something goes wrong. Tell me how to get these. And we were like, wait, people actually want to wear these. We want to wear them. People want to wear them. I had, I had people along the way that wanted to step in and intervene or be a part of this journey that are no longer here. Um, because I think a lot of relationships, no matter, no matter how it goes, unfortunately, you're going to run into a lot of relationships that are a dollar deep. And I kind of thought everybody was looking out for my best interest in the beginning and had to learn very quickly that that's not really how this goes. It's a, it's a dollar deep. So when I tell you about these relationships that have um, formulated and cultivated over 10 years, it just makes me beam with pride because we've come such a long way. Listen, this is what's happening. You guys, every color. Now, little bay, big bay, little red, big red. It's not just it's not just a business for business sake. I think a lot of people, when you see online, um, people talking about someone's business, they're like, or when I see criticisms of myself or anybody else, you see like, she's only doing it for the money. And it's like, well, why do you go to work? You know, why are you clocking in? Nobody's doing anything just from, you know, the pit of their gut to just like donate back to the earth. Everybody's trying to find a way to alleviate that financial stress everybody's trying to find a way to just get out of the survival circle and actually feel what it feels like to thrive. And I'm one of the few people I feel like in this industry that's been able to kind of figure that out. And I don't know, I just want to share this journey. Maybe you're right where I was when I was selling the shirts off my back. What we started to do is make crazier and crazier outfits. I thought it would be really cool. I love the contrast. I've always loved contrast. I love that my husband has tattoos and gauges and has never really ridden a horse. I love the contrast of me riding in vans and listening to hip hop music and um, not being stereotypically country. Whoa, that's pretty great. These are the highlights right here. <laughs> the color didn't miss, it's highlights. Um, I love the contrast of things. I think it's really, really beautiful when something is really culturally diverse or super diverse in whatever way. I think it's, that's what makes something so cool. So we just started to make stuff that was like really crazy, like stuff that I would wear in the 90s, but again, on a shoestring budget. So we started spray painting everything. I ruined a bunch of saddles, <laughs> getting everything spray painted on. 
tack that we just like put fabric around in hot glue to just try to make it all match. Jesse and her sister Cody started painting hats and those went absolutely viral. Um, but I was able to wear like custom hats, which was so cool. I think from the outside looking in, everybody was like, oh, like kind of respect in the drip. Like uh, plenty of people were like, she looks like an idiot. So this was people picking on me for wearing flashy outfits. And I just wanted to relive like, hey, you know, all the like, all the Grace. predecessors did mm -hmm. this. Yeah. But other people were like, look at all her stuff that she has, not knowing that literally I was patched together, glued together, sewn together, probably the day before, and just hoping that it would all stay together for that run um, so that I wouldn't look like the girl that had absolutely zero dollars in the bank that was just trying to start something. I began to get interviewed as Baby Flo and I began to win. Back here on the back side of the Thomas and Mack Center with Fallon Taylor. How are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Good, you are creating quite the stir on social media and everything. I do what I can. They would ask me why it is that I'm putting together these really crazy outfits and these really cool hats and they asked me why I did that. And I said, because I can't sing or I can't dance. You know, Beyonce, Rihanna, whoever is performing, they're putting on a performance for people that paid for a ticket, just like I am when I run barrels. Tonight, the night team's David Sears introduces us to a world champion barrel racer who has gained attention, not just for her writing, but also for an addition to her already eye-catching wardrobe. The reigning world champ. I would say I'm a little eccentric, maybe a skosh flamboyant, and um, I pride myself in giving electric performances in the arena. That is how barrel racer Fallon Taylor describes herself. From her sparkling cowboy boots to her shiny world champion belt buckle, flaming red hair under a colorful cowboy hat. Even Baby Flo plays the part. I just try to make it as fun as possible. Well, there's no question she's the most noticeable figure when you get to the Calgary Stampede. The crowd goes absolutely crazy for you. We know that you bring a super fun, unique fashion sense to the world of rodeo. Well, I'm hoping I get to come back for the next few rounds so I can wear my tie-dye and go crazy. So I'm hoping this is just my first outfit. So here is my closet, and there is all sorts of stuff in here. Um, of course, a lot of fringe. A lot of fringe, some feathers exploding out of here, a lot of rhinestones. There's so much fun stuff. And then I've got like my new kind of sleek Beyonce type things that I'm gonna do later in the year that's not gonna have um, fringe and all this craziness. So it's just gonna be a little bit sleeker and a little bit more comfortable for me to wear. So that is what I've got going on. And of course, a lot of tie dye. And when you're in Austin, that's totally appropriate. I can go crazy. So I love that. I don't know what I'm gonna wear yet tonight, but we'll see. Every year that I qualified before previously, 95 through 98, um, there was a small best dress award and we always worked to bring a lot of glamour. Um, and my mom and, and I got together and we really designed some outfits. This year we thought it would be sentimental to go back and try for the best dress award again. It's super self-serving for me to be, to think that I'm just entering a rodeo for myself to win points. I think that that's, as from a competitor's standpoint, that's how it works. But from the person's perspective of buying a ticket, they wanna see a show. And so I thought that was the coolest thing. Now from the very beginning, my mom taught me, um, she had me in spandex with the little puffy shoulders and the big bow and the whole thing when I started running barrels at seven. So this wasn't a new concept that I thought up all on my own. This was definitely a group effort. And over time, my mom would be like, you don't have to be wealthy to clean your boots. And that was her whole thing was like, you can still put an outfit together from the thrift store and look really nice and look really put together. And so that was kind of where we went. It was like, this is a performance. We want something really cool. I would love to look back and say, I'm some like genius that over time has made all of these really great calculated moves that have ended up being the right move. But I think when you move from a place that's really genuine, and you really wanna add value and you really genuinely care, it shows and it comes through. I think that when you're trying to make a quick buck and you're trying to kind of be a gimmick or be a fad or do something that somebody else has done or copy exactly what somebody else has done and then move forward, I think that people see through that so easily and they're like, she's just doing this for whatever. Um, but I think the people that 
realized that I really, really wanted to put on a show and I wanted to smile when I turned a barrel and um, I wanted to show everybody what this little red horse could do. She wasn't very flashy, but the least I could do was be as flashy as possible to try to kind of offset what we didn't have. And it worked. And people started kind of understanding my message as I would post a positive post every single day on Facebook. Um, there was no Instagram yet, so I was just posting away like, you know, let's, instead of let's, you know, roll over and suck our thumb and let people tell us we can't do it, why don't we put a target on our back that's tie-dye and go out there and show them what we've got and fail with a smile on our face and just keep failing forward. And that's what the whole brand began to stand for, was we are this pile of underdogs and we are not going to just be wallflowers and we're not just gonna stand in the corner just because you don't like the way we look or you don't like our size or you don't like our skin color or you don't like where we came from, or you don't like that I'm not a real cowgirl, any of those things, instead, we're gonna be flashy and we're gonna dress in a really creative way and we're gonna give these people that bought a ticket something to look at and celebrate and cheer for because it's something that they can really get behind. And it caught on like wildfire. Because here we are a decade later and you're still seeing things like being shifted and shaped and like, people recognizing that like, that's a cool vibe and it doesn't have to just scream, I work cattle all day. I can just say, I'm, I'm a girl that really loves horses and I wasn't raised on a farm, I wasn't raised on a ranch and I'm not as cool as you, but I do have my own vibe and that's pretty cool. So that's how we got started. We had started the retail store online and it was doing really well. I mean, we thought we were like really doing it and we were sending out the envelopes one at a time and handwriting all the addresses on every single order and just all collectively like bouncing between the job that we were supposed to be doing and writing Colts and handwriting these um, labels onto envelopes and getting shipments out and making mistakes as we went to now it's time to load up and go to the NFR. And Jesse had been up for days in a row, dying jeans, days and days and days. Cody had been up for days, hours and hours and hours and hours making my outfits. Jesse was dying jeans for the booth. I was trying to get my rig ready to actually try and go win something at the national finals rodeo. And when it came down to like, okay, we need to leave at 6 a.m., Jesse brought me the jeans. Um, I think she made three or 400 pairs of jeans. I mean, it took forever. Her hands were dyed blue. Cody hadn't slept in days putting together all of these outfits to make it look like we had all of our stuff together. And um, I spent the rest of the night ironing all 300 pairs of jeans in the kitchen of my little trailer to try to get all of this to go and hang it up and make sure nothing got ruined on the way. First off, I wanna know, where could I get a pair of pants like that? Mine are a little bit blonde. Listen, I make these in your size. You can come by the ranch dressing booth at South Point. I will hook you up, okay? All right. <laughs> and and I'll be wondering what you're going to wear tomorrow. I don't even know yet. Uh, I'll see oh, what I'm feeling God. like. So we'll see what, what jumps out of the closet tomorrow. At that point, we did not have our own manufacturing process, of course. Um, so it was, it was tough. It was really, really cool. But every single penny um, that Baby Flow won, contributed back to inventory. So we all say that we work for Baby Flow. She's given me more than a world championship. She's given me more than an AQHA world championship. She's given me more than fulfillment. Um, she's given us all a job. And um, I don't think everybody quite realizes that every single penny that she won, the extravagant things that we didn't have. I had sponsored rigs at one point. Finally, people started to believe in us and I was given um, sponsor trailers to drive and sponsored trucks at one point to drive. Every penny was going back into ranch dressing. Um, we've never had loans here. We've never had outside funding. So every single thing that we've done has been funded from some way in the early days, straight from Baby Flo and I going on the road, winning enough and being able to put it right back into buying a little bit more inventory. And um, I got laughed at so much for not having a bigger rig or my shower going out or not being able to have the nicest stuff on the road. The evolution continued, baby flow continued to win. And as things escalated and me and my friends started to kind of cultivate this little baby version of ranch dressing, it started to become a lot more fun. The pressure was off. 
with needing to pay my entry fees as much because I was able to actually win my entry fees and win my expenses. So it was going really good. And people were really standing behind the brand as I was going down the road. So just seeing this evolve over time and seeing that there are people like me that don't have um, every single thing that looks like everyone else's and people that maybe didn't have perfect bodies and didn't have perfect everything starting to be like, ah, I like this underdog vibe. I really dig it. As um, Jesse and I grew to be even closer friends and work associates in, in the little front office of our barn in Whitesboro, Texas, where I would ride Colts and um, she converted the front office into um, like a t-shirt store. I think we had four t-shirts. I don't mean four styles, I mean four t-shirts. Um, as I would sell horses um, out of there, we would show people the merchandise and try to get people interested in taking home a t-shirt or taking um, home a Western shirt or something that we were trying to come up with. And thank God we had just a little bit of support to be able to buy enough inventory to do it all over again. Through Jesse was Cody, her sister, and Cody started to make leotards for me. Um, this was 2012, 2013 and she began to teach herself how to make leotards. Um, she sewed them by hand and put crystals on them and made them absolutely gorgeous. Again, we had enough funds to be able to buy materials and try to perfect them and get them done. Cody would stay up all hours of the day or night and put these things together with a custom hat and then Jesse would dye jeans or I would dye jeans in a bucket next to my horse trailer, which I still have a pair of in my closet today that I dyed next to my horse trailer because we were last minute and needed a pair of jeans. I think just bringing the glamor back to rodeo and feeling okay about it. Like I think there's this very, it's always been there, kind of the stigma in the horse industry that you can't out punchy the next person. And so bringing in kind of a feel of glamour and femininity into a sport that is so beautiful and has so many amazing people and so much talent. I just feel like that's my favorite part. On top of now being able to um, have some things that are functional and fashionable, but that's not gonna happen until later. Ranch dressing's got a long way to go. Ranchdressing.com, so that's the first time you have- This is the first time we had ranch dressing. So this- the end of this boot tuck jean was a so the problem was the boot cut jean like sold out we couldn't get them anymore so we didn't know what to do because we weren't manufacturing our own jeans oh, yeah. so we had to make skinny jeans a cool thing mm -hmm. yeah yeah we got a newsletter this is the this is the picture that haunts my dreams <laughs> my nightmares and now we're really now we're going mm -hmm. so now we've learned at this point january 2015 how to get blanks in. First of all, that hoodie went so hard and so did that one and mm -hmm. so did that one. And then we pre-ordered all the fear shirts and this was, this went, this went bananas. That yeah. went nuts. Yeah, that went bananas. I feel like staying really, really true to my brand has been an amazing, amazing thing because the evolution of it has been so organic. You are super flashy out there this year, Fallon. Yeah, it's part of my flair. I, I um, enjoy giving people something to talk about. I enjoy letting them see a lot of glitz and glamour like we used to have back in the day. And I think the fans really get into it and enjoy it. We've never had to buy followers. We've never had to try too hard. We just make stuff that we think would be absolutely amazing. And we found our people that feel the exact same way, that have the same giddiness when you see something come out that you're like, oh, that matches all my stuff. So I think that as Ranch Dressing grew, we just continued to find our tribe over and over and over again. And even though like it started out with me just kind of faking that I was secure standing out to the point that I actually gained that confidence and all of these people with their support for the business and recognizing my friends having really, really, really amazing boatloads of talent to be able to make these visions come true was probably the coolest part of seeing this. And it's still unfolding every single day. The magic is still exactly as it was. I'm just not having to sell this shirt right now <laughs> to make it happen. As more responsibility comes on, it obviously feels a little bit heavier. We have to feel a little bit more responsibility with the numbers getting bigger and to be able to 
embrace this new responsibility, but it's made us all stretch and grow as people. Every single outlet, like taking on six different jobs at a time because we just can't afford to hire people for every single position. And then figuring out how the manufacturing process works and how do we get our quality up and all of these various things that we've had to struggle through, we've all had to learn because we couldn't afford to hire people that were necessarily best people for the job at the time. We had to hire people that were available that we could then train for the job um, because that's how we started. And not everybody has worked out, but the people that have been on board with us all through the way have made a contribution to this brand. And regardless if they've stayed here forever, we're super grateful for their work within the brand because it means the whole world to us. Every single t-shirt that goes out, every single person that still says, tell baby flow hi for me. Um, every single time we get a note on an order that says, my daughter looks up to you so much. And just knowing that, you know, a sticker or a cup or something that we've made here, I very seldom think people realize that when we're shorthanded, it's us making the t-shirt or it's us still boxing things. I think that people think that um, when you get to a certain level and you're building your, your business reaches the multi-million dollar mark that all of a sudden you're eating bonbons and you step away and then your employees handle it all. And I think that's how businesses can fail or how people can fail in life is kind of putting things on cruise control. We would stay up all night right now, tonight, if it meant getting 300 pairs of jeans out the door and it's that same level of work ethic and gratitude for this journey that I think has made us really, really successful and differentiates us from other brands. Just showing you 2018 warehouse vibes. So uh, more successful you. I'm proud of you because back in the day, this is how you did it. There's Huxley. There's the doggy gate. There's the door prop. This is how we organize everything. <laughs> this, this is gonna make me be a better business owner right here. Um, these are the this is the current vibe of the warehouse. It's just chaos. Osita is helping with inspections. I'm currently running these two heat presses. Coco is running this gym of a heat press. We've run out of room. Here's the December orders. There's mom's green stuffed bell peppers that make my life a better place. Then the future, that will be my husband and the father of my children and he is folding like a champ right there. And today is a big day and there's Sheba. We love her so much. Today is the day that this came in. So this is a big deal. It's a big day. First time to ever write a kid's book. Woo! All right, so dear future Fallon, get your shit together, girl, this sucks. Get your shit together. Look how messy this is. Look at you. Not having this all done and delegated and put, making your friends slave and shit. Get it together, okay? You're a world champion. You wanna be, be on that heat press, girl? I hate to say we never thought that it would get here, but I think it's very, very hard to envision where you're going from where you're starting because if you don't break things down into milestones of like, I would just like to get out of the vinyl room in the single wide trailer. Jesse and Cody would just like to not have to have product made in their kitchen. They had things in their kitchen. They had things in their house. We had two rooms in a house taken up with other merchandise. We were shipping out of like a 10 by 12 plywood room. I'm just going to like point out the size wise this is where we started would have been this would have been a little bit this would have been bigger this area right here our first with the, original warehouse after with the plywood floor after like yeah all of our houses yes no i'm sorry here it was here yeah for visualization purposes you would think like you know that was, that was a wall yeah so this was a whole so this was a wall on the other side of this we have pictures was yeah one part of the well wait because the hay barn was on this side first then we moved it to this side mm -hmm. yeah then we put a roof on this side and this was hay and shavings yeah. and tractor storage mower storage tires we took a picture on that day too much later though that way much later yeah. so 
where we're standing now would have been like the back wall to like right there. But the door opened from right to that wall. Yeah, the door opened from over there, but we it was a walkthrough of concrete. We didn't have the we didn't have stock to put in anyway. That's that's that part. And we had like four people in there and we were just continually trying to raise the standard, but I don't think we ever saw it here, which excites me because I don't think that right now I can see how far it's gonna go. And that's the coolest part. We still don't have loans. We still don't take outside funding. We still do everything as we go. The funny thing about Alex coming into my life, just kind of poof out of nowhere, which was really exciting, is that it was exactly how it happened with Jesse. I'm just kind of like out of nowhere, boom, here's this really cool girl with a vision. And then here's this guy and they're very, very similar. Um, especially the way that they think and they want to plan and and so it just like it really fit in all together when Alex came in to the picture I didn't even think that we were going to have a romantic relationship because we were so like nerdy talking to each other I didn't know at that point that like that would be what would keep us like so we're so intrigued with each other all the time and that hasn't faded even a little bit but he has always recognized the talent that I'm surrounded with. Not that I don't, not that I don't know that Jesse is absolutely amazing at what she does or Cody is absolutely brilliant at what she does. But he was just like, um, you have 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. You should get back to making content. And I bet Cody would love to do that. And then Cody being like, I told you that last year, like, why don't we do stuff? And I'm just like, I'm just, I don't know, you know, I, I guess we should try it. So this like magic of everybody coming together has just evolved over time. And I think it's evolved at the right pace. Yeah, we would love to be the biggest Western brand in America, but is being a really great brand with really amazing ethics. And we know exactly who we are. We know our identity within the Western community and we know exactly the people that love for us and ride, ride for us and rep the brand. We know exactly who hates us too which is totally fine. As long as you know where we stand, I think that's fantastic. We know who absolutely loathes our stuff. And guess what? Some of them are starting to wear our stuff now. And we look and we're just like, oh, they love our stuff. Um, so we are at this point where things are elevating really beautifully. And I think we're almost starting to take in a few more of the vibes outside of our own where we're starting to be like, wow, I recognize that that's really cool and I wanna wear that too. And just making things that are super, super functional while being really, really pretty. So when Alex came in the picture, fast forward a couple of years and he was like, you should try to get into one of these big Western stores. I think that would be the coolest thing ever. And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to do that. And he was like, we should just, see if we could go viral on Instagram and tell all everybody if they want to see ranch dressing in boot barn to like tell boot barn. And we went viral hard and boot barn reached out to us and they were like, let's have a meeting, bring some samples. And I was like, what are we going to do now? We got on a plane, we headed to California. I remember taking my picture out front of the door and being like, this is going to be so great having no line sheets, industry speak, no line sheets, you don't know your margins, you don't know your delivery dates, you have no idea what your shipment times are gonna be like, and just walking into this meeting and hoping that they don't laugh us out of here. Because at that point, like, yeah, me, Jesse and Cody think it's really cool. And some people on the internet double tap our pictures and we sell quite a bit of stuff, but like what, what is somebody like Boot Barn gonna think? Are they gonna think the same thing or are they gonna make me feel this big? Everybody there was so kind and warm and loving and they were like, we can't wait to place an order with you and put all of these things in the store and we're gonna test it out a little bit. And now I wanna say we're in the majority of the stores of Boot Barn and that moment I cried from the car to the plane, getting off the plane. I called home crying, um, it just was, a really big deal not because that was the end all be all or even a goal that was really on our radar but because that was some form of credibility for this brand that we're not just 
in this hay barn that we have rehabbed into this warehouse that we've done construction on three times now, maybe four. It is a place where now we're all getting this recognition. Watching Boot Barn feature Ranch Dressin in their shoot in Italy or at their runway show in Vegas and watching things come down and seeing that that came off of my friend's hand onto a computer, onto my spreadsheet, into a YouTube video that my other friend created onto the back of a horse at a rodeo and now it's on a runway was just like, I'm processing all of this information with my husband who is using his marketing skills to make sure that the world sees it and not just us go, we think it's really cool, hope somebody comes and finds us and to be able to just hold their hand and watch as the girl who showed up in my living room in my single wide trailer with her horse named Harlow that now is holding her child on her lap named Harlow and watching the jeans she designed come down toward me with my husband sitting next to me that believes in this brand and my friend filming so that the world can see is just like too much for me to process. Once we started learning about how this process was gonna work and I kind of got past my imposter syndrome of, I don't deserve this or this could go away at any minute. Um, when I kind of got over the hump of that and started to realize that we need to take a very serious look at getting this stuff manufactured correctly. Again, I ran into a lot of wasted money and a lot of failed experiments and a lot of manufacturing processes that just did not work out. Um, we finally were able to get the quality down to at least be a starting point to manufacture things. And that was really, really cool. But as we grew, we started to have to like move all of the, the hay and stuff out of the warehouse into the horse facility part, which you would think like, oh, you already had your hay there, but this was a hay barn. And so we started to take the hay barn apart and have to make it into all clothing. After this part, and this was all my hay, right? Yeah, you have that picture Yes. we all sweaty and in the background you can see that this was all a dirt floor. Yes, so this was all dirt and this was, um, and then we expanded this to, this is what you see in all the vlogs where we have the shelves up against the wall like, and there was a door. That, that was a solid wall. This was all a solid wall, no bathroom of course. Mm -hmm. Did you have to go to the barn bathroom or the house? No, go to the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then we, which was my house and then we got that moved out so the big upgrade was like it's not been until like three years ago that we've had a toilet in here <laughs> which was such a big deal for us um and air conditioning and then this is now our headquarters this used to be my hay barn and it was what basically the size of one stall is where we ran my clothing line and now we've expanded and i'm so proud of it thank you guys all so much for your support this pole to this right here this edge of the concrete. Yeah. So from here to these poles, this was all hay and shavings, then turned into what you guys saw in the vlogs of like, we thought we had so much stuff. And then the next part was, okay, well let's bust open this wall and this wall and insulate it. And we'll have deliveries come in. These poles, of course, because it's an original pole barn, the poles are everywhere, like that pole right there that's horribly inconvenient. But we just kept building onto this one thing. So the shelves that we had built for that warehouse are now these shelves that are here. You see these big metal shelves, so we just repurposed those there. This has grown from a really big dream that me and my friends had, and we're all just really, really proud of it. So now we have a lot more space, and we're growing, so we need even more space, but we're making it work. When we got this part done and this part done, by the time we got to the end of that, we need more space by the time we got there. So then we decided put everything on rolling racks in here and that we would put in a bathroom and we'd blow out the whole wall and add on another 3,000 square feet. So that's what's back here. And a break room, just such a big deal. It's not perfect, we all know that. So this, these poles that you see here was that wall Okay, so this is last year. This feels five years old. Yeah. And like outdated and we need to redo it. <laughs> but all this got done 
break room, another roll up door out here, all of these cardboard bins. So the shelving as you go through and the bathroom. And then now for this year's project is the second warehouse. Cause now we learned like it's enough is enough here at the ranch. Although we do want to stay on the ranch and be able to work around our horses and raise our kids out and about in the sunshine and tractors. Enough is enough with like overstock things. And then Alex and I have our office going up, which is really, really cool. And it's like, it's, it's large. We are going to go check out a new warehouse space because we built and built and built. You can go ahead and start it. Now it sounds big, 1600 square feet of office space with five different offices. We don't have anybody to put in those offices, um, but there's storage and Wi-Fi and bathrooms in there. And then the warehouse is 3000 square feet. I don't know what we're rocking with right now, but I would guess it's probably around 3000 square feet. Give yeah, or take. To go vertical and this is just for overstock storage. Yeah. So we desperately need like all the stuff that doesn't have a side. So we currently have like off in the distance, two train cars, one for personal storage and one for overstock. But um, as our accounts, our wholesale accounts grow, we are having a hard time holding stock for what comes in and then we're growing. So the entire arena is full of boxes. So we're trying to start Colts at the same time and there's just boxes everywhere. So we're gonna see if it makes sense spatially and financially today and I are headed over to the new warehouse because we get to take over the lease today. So today is the day that we get to um, go in as the tenants, I guess. So here it is. So we just acquired a new space. We are just a little ways from the ranch. Um, an easy drive. Jesse is already like making stuff happen over there and I would help, but you know, this is me helping at this point. The ranch warehouse is still a warehouse, but you guys remember that we built on, we, how many times we built on? Three? One, three? Three, and we're full. That's it. And the arena is full. And so now we have like a full-time person putting a start on these Colts so that me, Jesse, Cody can go enjoy them but we actually can't ride them really in the arena. I mean, we can, but we can't, but we can, but we can't, cause it's, there's no room. So we're trying to actively move all of these boxes. Wait, I gotta take this opportunity. Oh, that's so cute. Um, <laughs> we, yeah, right here, my mom. <laughs> um, so we have this beautiful space now and we jumped on it and I know that we already can fill this today right now, but the whole thing is at least the ranch can stay the ranch. The I arena can stay the arena. Today. <laughs> there are so many boxes coming in. We have a new receiving lady as we've grown. We have like departments and the new receiving lady who is a blessing is overwhelmed with the sparkles beside it because there's no place to put literally anything. So at some point, maybe in the future, future Fallon and Ranch Dress and whole team, maybe we're gonna have to set up a shipping station out of just here. So I could see that, that possibly being in our very near future that we have to like ship out of here. We will be receiving here, but anyway, it's departments and levels and things and stuff. And it's really exciting. There's also like a front office so Cody can film TikToks or we can do indoor photo shoots. We set it up with studio lights and all sorts of stuff. We can also, we've got a place where we can put a bed for Alex and I, the dogs and the baby, should we need to like crash and call. It works out for everybody. So um, we know we're gonna be here through 2025, which is just really weird because we've kind of, I know, we've kind of always done things by the seat of our pants and we've been like super non-committal. Committed, but not at all committed. So committing to this was just like, felt like a big girl move of like, we're committed. To be honest, every single milestone of this business has felt like very imposter syndrome of, do we deserve this? Are we supposed to have all this? Like, are, are we doing good enough? Is it ever gonna feel easy to 
wow, I can't believe this is happening and it's going so well. And are we doing good enough? Are we being good enough stewards of every single level of this? But I think um, if you have ever reached for something really big, the big takeaway is it is really, really hard to in the moment appreciate what's happening in the moment. What's happening in the moment is the good times. And even though it may feel like a complete struggle, I've never reached a part where it's felt easy. And I have now settled into understanding that it's probably never going to feel easy. However, if we can continue to feel fulfillment and we continue to watch the brand grow and continue to reach these milestones, it's absolutely worth it. Let me take you, this is a really big deal. This is, this is the system complete with like a gun and the printer and all the things. And there's a packing station behind me, which is like, you know, poly mailers and all the things and stuff. The first order that we ever got, which shipped three weeks late because we didn't know what we were doing. Um, <laughs> we had to get the, we took the picture of the shirt, but we didn't actually have the like product in hand. And so we had, we didn't have the money to pre-buy it. So we were just testing the waters. Would somebody want to buy it? And then we went to buy it and they were sold out. So we had to wait for them to come back in stock. It was a whole thing. We learned a lot. So we would get the shirt and then we would press the print, whatever style was on the shirt, or we'd have to make the design on the vinyl cutter and do the whole thing. And then we would get that and we would package it up and put it in a poly mailer. And then we would like hand write the whole envelope. And so when we started getting some volume orders, like 10, 20 orders a day, that became pretty tough. Then we transitioned, we were big time. We transitioned to a computer software, but we had to type everyone's thing. You would see an order pop up. And every time we heard the ding that we had a sale, we would all scream and go crazy. <laughs> and we still do that when we turn, when we have a launch, we still turn our notifications on and Alex gets very upset and offended when we turn the notifications on and don't turn the sound on. It's still a really big deal to hear, hear those notifications. And even though look, now the, the pace is just different, so it's really cool. So then we would type everyone's stuff in one by one by one by one. And let me tell you, when we got to Black Friday, because I did this whole idea of a closet clean out. And when we launched the Eris brand, I decided to give away a free piece of my closet with every purchase. And I did not know what that was going to do. And then when we worked all day and night until 5 a.m. to get the orders loaded up into a horse trailer, we very quickly realized we're gonna have to do something different. <laughs> we're gonna have to do something drastically different. So the day that we got this printer was such a big, this was such a big day. So, and I feel like everything is still so new, even though we've been stepped up and upgraded and growing and we have, you know, a lot of stuff in here and we're, we're big time now. I feel like we, I don't know, it just feels very new that we've had all these luxuries. So like just the, just the, the outlets above our head, like that's just a big deal to us. Like that's a big deal. Stupid. I know. But if you own a business, you totally get this. So, okay. So then we went from there to Alex stepping in harder at every chapter, right? He's already done all of this. So then he would be like, Hey, you guys got to optimize. And he would just keep saying that. I'm like, we don't have time to optimize because we couldn't get our head above water enough to look at a different way. So Cody's had to step in Jesse, myself, every person has had to step in at some point and like take care of a project. Cody has been our, our subcontractor or our contractor on all of these projects the whole time in between every single race and every single vlog just to try to get this done. All the bins you see set up, she had every meeting for that. So that was like, we can't do it all because you know, you've got me processing inventory. You got Jesse coming up with fire. You got Alex running ads. You got all these different things happening and the warehouse trying to get the orders out in a timely manner. So our first software was a really big deal, but you had to print, oh, what a nightmare. You had to print all the orders out. So when you see people that have like, oh, we sold so much this year or this month or whatever, when I see that in my mind, I'm like, one, good for you, that's freaking amazing. Two, you need to upgrade your stuff. Cause like these pieces of paper would lay around, will inevitably, so then one girl would have to come in early and just print all these hundreds of pieces of paper and then cut all the pieces of paper in half to try to optimize like the cost of like having this much paper. And then God forbid somebody walks by your stack of papers and it, like one blows underneath something. Down somewhere your order's lost and you can't find it in the system. It's a whole thing. So that was a big upgrade. We thought it was, I remember walking around rack to rack. We'd take a stack 
of papers and we would go like pull orders that way. So then from there, well, wait, what? I also mentioned like the more inventory we have, we have to just know where it was at. True. Yes. Yeah, so there's no inventory system at this point. So we didn't know where it was at. My big breakthrough moment one day, and it took me six hours, was to Roy G. Biv the warehouse, which in retrospect, yeah, that was, it was smart to do it. You could at least narrow down where the product was. Yeah, you could at least narrow down, but like, wow, I really thought I was onto something. <laughs> and it did help. And in the videos, you could see it, but it's like, you just had to know that that cap was on that shelf over yonder. Like you just had to know, which also means you can't take a day off. Because if you take a day off, you have to tell 17 people where that one thing is or else, you know, you're tied to this thing forever and ever. Amen. So then comes this system, which is really, really cool and very high end and costs a fortune. And the reason it costs a fortune and I'm so grateful for it um, is because you can hand anybody. We have like, so we're so Chick-fil-A now with like, we have the whole, this whole thing. And then we have a little scanner. And you can assign that to anybody. And literally what's so great, and we've proven this point, is even on their first day, somebody could be the best person at finding inventory in the warehouse on their first day because of the system. So now we know why why it costs so much because you can optimize um, who is pulling, picking, picking the order, packing the order, um, processing the inventory. If there's order errors, you can narrow it back down to who's making the error. All of those things um, have made it so that as the business owner, you can delegate better. Everything is labeled in a certain way. And if you look in the system and you want to find where something is, it tells you the exact location. And um, what's funny about this is that we just like, we didn't know, right? Like, so we didn't know. And the guy comes in and I'm not going to talk to this guy because Cody's going to handle it. And he comes in, he's like, he's like, oh, I'm so-and-so nice to meet you. And I was like, yeah, we're going to spend a lot of money to do this. So, you know, are you guys, are you up for the job? And he goes, well, we just did Amazon Dallas. So I was like, okay, so I guess you got it then. So that's how this all got um, done and organized. And it's not even remotely. But they did not give us like the location system. No, the location system was a, Cody, was a Cody thing. And then she made all of these bin locations, which is so great. And then had to have the meeting, which Cody and I did take that meeting on together. Um, and we even had the guy with the software system that makes this bin system work. We did have him cuddle all of Baby Flo's goats before he left. <laughs> so we made sure to break him in ranch style. Um, but those two things being very cohesive, like and having a mail truck and having a time that the mail goes out and that the mail's picked up and that someone, you know, is processing all of these different customer care issues and all of these things is like really, really, really cool. Um, and I feel like at this point in business that we are at zero, maybe plus one, maybe we're at one is what it feels like. So I think all of that to say, this has been a decade ish, almost a decade in the making. And I feel like on a scale of 10 of knowing and being really, really optimized and having a really great system in place and like really doing the best we can possibly do, I think we're at a one. Who's to say where it's gonna go? Cause like, I think we're gonna look back on this, on this vlog and it's gonna be very, very nostalgic. And I've tried to pep talk myself each step of the way. Um, if I think we're at a one, what does 10 look like? I don't know, but I'm excited to check it out. I'm excited to see. We're not perfect. We definitely have tried to perfect the system from handwriting labels in our living room and then handwriting labels in Hay Barn to now like we're full digital and like doing the deals. The full on American dream going on, the fulfillment of being able to see people walk through Vegas and see the jeans go by and they don't even know anymore. It's not like 100%, those are Fallon Taylor jeans like they started out. They're just like really, really cute jeans or cute top or um, watching somebody just walk by and having something of ours on their body and not even knowing that we were involved is the coolest part of this. Um, so being able to watch this grow has just been incredible. We're still uncomfortable at every stage as we learn to get to the next level, but I think the people that run their own business, they understand all of the, all of the roadblocks that you run into with manufacturing. 
I think it's really cool. There's been so many growing pains as we've gone so much dumb stuff that we just didn't know was coming down the pipe. You know, that first year, just figuring out what we owed in taxes. And I was just like, oh my God, what have we done? But through it all, we've learned so much and we've stuck to making stuff that we really love and wanna use and just hoping that somebody else really likes it. So that has spurred now into getting saddle sacks and that being its own company, tactical saddles with splint boots and bell boots and saddle pads and saddles being sponsored with my own line of saddles that was the coolest thing ever and then creating our own saddle brand just absolutely mind-blowing to me um, saddle sack being our best-selling product on the entire website is just the craziest thing that was jesse's idea that she was like hey i think this would be really cool and then to be able to see them all over the world and have people riding in them and just watching people run barrels, winning the world with a saddle sack on is just the coolest thing. We are most proud right now of our performance rodeo shirts. Cody and I were rodeoing all over the place and I was like, this is crazy because these things are not comfortable every single time. Like I wanna pull my, my shoulders forward. I feel like my shirt is kind of keeping me back and I don't wanna feel frumpy if I buy a shirt that's big enough this way, that's not long enough this way, and I can't ever get the shirt tail tucked in. And we need these things to be machine washable because I'm on the road. And so performance rodeo shirts were born and are absolutely the coolest thing. And they're, they're currently like going viral in the Western community. I'm seeing them at fraternities, at youth rodeos, all sorts of places, and it's just so much fun. So watching the brand kind of branch off into several brands has been really, really amazing. And I see us expanding that out even more in the future. We've been working on product after product for a really long time and having a lot more faith in ourselves and reading more books so that we feel less of that imposter syndrome and more of that empowered creativity where we feel like we're ready to stand behind all of these things and i think we've been in this business long enough to know we're not here for a little time we're here for a long time and we're here to make everybody feel amazing i feel like is the most important part in the grand scheme of things big goals are really tough there's big gaps in every single story of hardship tribulations, failed attempt at things, and so many things that have gone wrong. I hope that this serves as an inspiration for you to not only know how important you are in someone else's journey and how much your love and support, sharing something, liking something, commenting on something, how much it means to all of us and all of our families, but also in your journey to be inspired to keep amazing people around you that believe in the crazy things that you dream up, that don't think you're insane for trying to reach for something that's bigger than anybody around you has ever accomplished. I hope that you will always stay inspired to try to leave this world better than you found it because one single person can make a difference in an industry forever. And I hope that just taking a look back over all of these years of so many growth and milestones that we've had to put behind us pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and go to the very next chapter to try again. And this series of failures has inspired you to stay focused, stay the course and go after something huge. Thank you so much for every single contribution that you've made to our successes along the way. Thank you for making sure to stick with us through all of our failures. And while we won't get it right every single time, we are so grateful for what the future holds and what it is that we're gonna accomplish together. Thank you so much. Go do something amazing.